And welcome to worship. We are glad that you're here worshiping with us. Grab your spouse, your kids, your pets, and join us fully in this worship service. Um, on the screen, you'll see some gathering words, and I invite you to share those with me together. Blessed is the maker of the world, giver of life and breath. In you, O oh God, we live and move and have our being. Our first hymn this morning <laughs> is For the Beauty of the Earth, number 92 in our hymnal, and we're singing one, two, three, and six. and that was the song this week that was stuck in my mind so it's actually in our green books which I know we don't have very many of but the words are on the screen so you can sing with us
I think that's one of the beautiful things about online worship is we literally get to come as we are to worship God. It comes now time for prayer. And so on your screen, you'll see the names of those that we are lifting up this week in prayer. We are lifting up to this morning our world, those affected by this pandemic, and those that are making decisions. And Lord, we lift up to you Rudy Hurl, Jean Littrell, Gianna Hydebrink, Carol Pauling, Nathan West, Pat Backus, Shane Hill, Ruth Nelson, Betty Davis, Catherine Gregg, for all who have cancer, for all family care caregivers, and for all who are, who are having medical worries. This prayer that I am about to share with you is one of these where I say a few words and then you say the line, may your love like a seed take root and grow strong. So I will say a prayer, then we will all say together that line and everything will be on your screen. So will you pray with me? For all the blessings of this life, we give thanks to you Creator God, for families, friends, colleagues, neighbors, and strangers who nurture us that the love of God may grow within, that your love, your word, like a seed, may grow to produce in us good fruit. May your, By love, your love be, be like, like a seed, seed taking root and, and growing strong. strong. For the leaders of various nations and cities, they may lead with strong hearts and gentle hands and generous spirits, with compassion and mercy, with wisdom and grace. May they reflect your will, guiding all their actions and decisions. May your love be like a seed, taking root and growing strong. We pray, O oh Lord, for those who serve in harm's way, those who live in dangerous places, those who live in areas of war and strife, those who live in fear, those who worry about employment, bills, food, and struggle just to find dignity in life. May your grace bring peace and safety to all people, one to another. May, May your love be like, like a seed, seed taking root and, and growing strong. strong. For those who suffer, O Lord, from any illness or disease of mind, body, or spirit, restore these and all those we carry in our hearts to fullness of health. Health is only you, O God, can bring. May your mercy shower each of us with healing mercy and love. May your love be like a seed, taking root and going, growing strong. For those who are dying and for those who have died, Send forth your comforting love. Give solace to those who mourn. Console those who grieve. May your grace surround us like a mantle upon our heads, a shawl upon our shoulders, a hand to hold our hand. May your love be like a seed, taking root and growing strong. Amen. I love the resources I can find on the internet. That was from a website called RevGal blog pals yeah i got that right <laughs> um, our next song this morning is a hymn i need thee every hour number 397 in our hymnals <laughs> Thank you. 
offering last week I tried to send the bulletin three different times I hopefully you didn't get it three times because they kept coming back to me but in, in the emails I had the links of where you could give to the food pantry at First Christian Church and where you could give to help the food collection at the school district if you want that information I'm not going to put it in the bulletin email this week uh, let me know and I will send you an individual email. For some reason, I think Google is being weird about links and emails. I don't know. And hopefully there was no issues with the bulletin this week. So on the screen you will see um, and you can join with me in this prayer of Thanksgiving. <coughs> Giver all of all gifts, we are grateful for your every blessing and for your presence through all of life. In our joys and fears, and our hopes and dreads. We pray for those who do not know the consolation of your presence in their lives, asking that you reveal yourself to them through the gifts we have given and through the lives we live. Reveal yourself, O God, that all your children may find their true home in you. Amen. Our next hymn this morning is To God Be the Glory, number 98 in our hymnal. Thank you. 
So, funny story, before I start the sermon this week, last week I mentioned that I was going to kick off a sermon series and that I would email out a picture that we could share all over the world. Well, <clears throat> that's not happening <laughs> because I, um, I just didn't pay attention to the right words on the book and bought the wrong book and listened to that book for about six hours before I realized it was the wrong book. So I got to this morning prepared for this one book, which is not the book that I announced and it's really not appropriate. I mean, it's appropriate for a sermon, but it's, it's not appropriate for this time that we're in. So this morning I decided that, hey, last week I said that I loved John 15. So you know what I'm going to preach today? John chapter 15. So the scripture this morning is John chapter 15 verses 1 through 8. And I'm reading this from the NIV version. Um, and all of that will be on your screens. John 15, 1 through 8. I am the true vine, and my father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit, while every branch that does bear fruit he prunes, so that it will be even more fruitful. You are already clean because of the word I have spoken to you. Remain in me, and I will remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. I am the vine. You are the branches. If a man remains in me and I in him, he will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. If anyone does not remain in me, he is like a branch that is thrown away and withers. Such branches are picked up and thrown into the fire and burned. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be given to you. This is to my Father's glory that you bear much fruit, showing yourselves to be my disciples. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. So, fruitful disciples. What does it mean to bear fruit? <clears throat> In verse 5, it reads, I am the vine and you are the branches. That means that God is the vine and we are a part of his vine as the branches. You know vineyards. The vine is the thickest part and the branches all stem from the vine. The vine is the source of life for the branches. So now I wanna give you some visual situations and I want you to think about them and be honest with yourself. You don't have to answer any of the questions, but just look deeply within yourself. I have a couple questions. Have you ever been at the point in your life when you just don't understand why something happened? Maybe why there's a pandemic. Uh, you don't understand why you had a sudden death of a friend or a relative. Why your relationship with your spouse just isn't as good as what it was. Why your finances are more negative than positive. Maybe your kids are misbehaving and you don't know why. Something or everything in your life seems to not be going the way it should. You ever been there? I've been there. <laughs> okay, but if you haven't been there, maybe you've been here. So you're saved, you believe in Jesus, you go to church, you love serving God, you love the fellowship. Church is great, but you just can't figure out why the spiritual part of your life feels incomplete. You just don't feel successful with being a Christian. What is that whole fruit bearing thing anyway? Maybe there are some of you who have been here. You are a believer, sold out for Jesus. You worship, you praise God. You spend more time at church than you do with your family. You study the word of God. You pray, you believe, you witness, but still you're not receiving what you're praying for. Or maybe it feels like your prayers are hitting deaf ears. If you find yourself in any or in all of these situations, this scripture is for you today. 
Not only is it for you, but he is calling all of us to be fruitful disciples. So let's look deeply at the text. In verse 2, it says, He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit, while every branch that does bear fruit he prunes so that it will be even more fruitful. Ouch. That does not sound too promising. There are some uh, pastors and churches that actually teach that God literally discards an unfruitful Christian. That God doesn't have time for those who are not fruitful. But upon further study, I learned that the Greek translation of the word that they use for takes away or cuts off is a word that's pronounced arrow, and it's lifted, I mean it's lifted, it's spelled A-I-R-O. And to me, this gives the passage a whole new meaning, because arrow means to lift up or to take up. And in a vineyard, lift up is exactly what growers do to the branches that are trailing in the dirt. The branch that is trailing is, is that is having a struggling time, that is wondering what is going on in their life. The vine dresser comes alongside them, lifts up the dirty branches, washes them off, ties them up in the sun so that they can begin to produce again. That gives me a lot of hope. This verse also says <clears throat> that every branch that does not bear fruit, he prunes. Fruit is the tangible results of the talent, the gifts and talent that God has placed in your spirit. Fruit is doing God's work on earth. Fruit can also be defined as the qualities of Christian character. You know, the, the fruits of the spirit. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Thank God for the fruits of the Spirit. There's a scripture that says, For whom the Lord loves, he corrects. And I know sometimes that pruning can be painful. But sometimes we should be grateful for how God is gently correcting us, gently lifting us up out of the dirt. The pain we pain that we face when God is pruning isn't just a bad day or a bad year. The pain that sometimes we feel is God loving us. Is God loving us enough to not leave us the same? Is God gently pushing us to say, You are my beloved child, you've got this, keep going. We should never think. I'm not going to tell you what to think, but I think that believing that all suffering comes from God is incorrect. God is the source of every good and perfect gift, but we happen to live in a fallen world where disease and evil people and natural disasters and just evil can strike at any time, at unexpected times. And God understands our pain so deeply that he chose to send his son, that he chose to send his own flesh and blood to bring us redemption and eternal life, to bring us out of our darkness. The Bible makes it clear that God will use discomfort in our lives to get our attention, that God will lovingly tap us on the shoulder or keep knocking on our hearts when he longs for us to turn to him. The Bible is clear that we should seek repentance of the things we know we should do. Will our Father stop pursuing us with his best? No. God will never stop pursuing us. We can never miss God's grace. We may say we're going to push God's grace over here for a minute, but God's grace will always catch up with us. We cannot even lose God's grace when we break his heart. Even if it takes us a couple of times to hear his word and get his directions, God's grace is still there. 
Because God longs and desires for us to be 100% abundant in Him, to have abundant life. Remember the sermon a couple weeks ago? God longs for us to bear much fruit, showing to be His disciples. That branch, you, are way too valuable for Him to throw away. God loves us too much not to intervene when we slide off course. God has a plan and still has a plan for our lives, even in this time of pandemic. A lot of this information that uh, came from this sermon came from a book by Darlene Wilkinson. Um, And this is a quote directly from her. She said, sadly, Christians you and I know are suffering every day unnecessarily because they have not heard or acted on the truth of God's pruning. They misinterpret, un, they misinterpret unwanted circumstances and emotions as random events when they are actually God's nudging efforts to set them free from sin and burdens and to set them on the path back to fruitfulness. Okay, so you're opened to being pruned and to go down this life of the disciplined life. You feel the closeness of God. It's wonderful and great. But then something happens. Or you just can't seem to grow anymore. Let's look at verse 4. Verse 4 says, Remain in me, and I will remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. Remain in me. Some of your scripture verses will call this abide in me. And what it means by abide is to remain, to be close, to stay next to God. So do you know how a vine dresser can tell which uh, vine is going to produce more fruit? It's been said that a seasoned vine dresser can look at his vineyard and tell you which one is going to produce the most fruit just by looking at it. A vine dresser knows which branch branch will bear the most fruit even before the fruit begins to grow. And this is how. The vine dresser measures the circumference of the branch right where it comes out of the vine. The size of the meeting place reveals the potential size of the harvest to come. Okay, so where the branch comes out of the vine, the bigger that circumference, that connection right there, the more that branch is going to produce. The size of the meeting place reveals the potential size of the harvest to come. The harvest can't be greater than this, what this union allows. That would be impossible. On the other hand, the greater the union, the bigger the connection, the greater the yield. So I hope that makes sense. If we remain in God and abide close to God and our connection to God is strong and wide and our connection to the the branches, connection to the vine is strong, then our lives will be more fruitful. We cannot do or be anything without God, without the power of the Holy Spirit. So we must do everything we can to create, maintain, and build that connection with God. We can build a stronger union by humbling ourselves, by letting God take control. In order to humble ourselves, we need to be able to give up some stuff. And the hardest thing is to give up control. We humans love to control so much. I think one of the biggest things that this pandemic is teaching us, that we are not in control. There is very little we can control. We can control our connection with God. Um, But we have to give up the right to be in control. We have to give up the right to be prosperous. Some of us think 
that we should be better off with Jesus just because we go to church more. We have to give up the right to keep picking up those sins that we keep asking God for forgiveness for. Sometimes humans believe that we are maimed and we will always be that way. I'm divorced and that will always bring me shame. No. Any sin that was committed in all of that situation, I have given up to God and I am God's beloved child and so are you. We don't have to keep picking up that same old stuff. God has forgiven us for our sins. We have to give up the shame and the guilt and relinquish all of that to God and allow God's river of love to flow from his vine into our branches. So to recap, to be a fruitful disciple, we must allow God to do what could be painful pruning and we must give control over to God so that we can have a stronger relationship with God so that our connection can stay open and flowing so the love and the grace and the mercy that comes from God that vine can flow freely into all of his branches so now let me close with some good news because painful pruning and giving up control does not sound like too much fun but God gives us a promise at the end of this scripture right here in verse 7 it says if you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be given to you. Wow. But so many times we overlook the fullness of this promise. Remain in me. First, we must remain in him. We must worship, read and pray and fast and journal and testify to God's goodness. Then we must allow his words to saturate our entire beings. We must take time to be holy, as the hymn, the old hymn says. We must take time to sit and be in the presence of God. We must take the time to say a prayer and God says, wait, and we wait. Then when we remain in his word, we can ask whatever we wish and it will be given to us. And remember, verse 8, it is to God's glory that we bear much fruit, showing ourselves to be his disciples. God's glory. There's a scripture verse in the Old Testament that God is so big that even the train of his robe couldn't even fit into our sanctuaries. God's glory. It's to God's glory that we are his disciples, that we remain in him. It gives him pleasure makes him happy when we are connected to him when we are giving up those things that squash our connection to him so my prayer for you this week even when we're pulling our hair out over do we go back to work do we go to this place do we what wear a mask do we not what whew. even with all of this going on God longs for us to be his fruitful disciple God longs for us to remain in him so that his love and mercy and grace can flow freely into us. So how can you this week grow your connection with God? Let me know. Amen. Amen. One of the beautiful things that we can do to grow closer to God is worship him. So our next hymn this morning is Joyful, Joyful, We Adore Thee, number 89 in our hymnal.
God of Harvest, Gardener Supreme, you place us at the center, you feed us, equip us, and having provided for us, look to a different harvest, a fruitfulness of lives and service to you and others. God of Harvest, feed us, prune us, harvest us that our lives might bring glory to you. And, oh, Lord, we know that you hear the cries of your people. We give thanks that you hear us, and we pray that you'll hear us when we collectively pray together the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead, and lead us not, not into temptation, temptation but, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Now receive these words of benediction. Wherever we are, we are in God. Wherever we are, we are in Christ. And Christ is in us. Wherever we are, the Spirit abides with us and in us. We go forth in peace and hope and hope upheld by God in every way let us go forth in faithfulness and trust that we may all see the divine in and through us God be with you until we meet again